Hey, everybody. How are we doing? I hope you're doing well. Oh, it's letting me know I'm live right now. Oh, my God. I need to get rid of that. Good Lord. Anyways, how are you doing? I hope everybody's doing well. I hope uh, you're enjoying your Tuesday. I um, I kind of have the, uh, the blacked out background here. Going through a little bit of change. A little bit of change here on my end of it. Um, but all good. All good. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, some changes coming up. As a matter of fact, I need you to get out the old calendar. Because um, I got some surprises. Oh, yeah, I got some surprises. I like to surprise you guys. I do amazing. like to... Come on. Come on, really? Let me know you're out there. Give me a shout out. Let me know that you're alive and well. Paxton in the house saying hi over on YouTube. Um, my... Go live over here. Oh, I'm on Instagram too right now. Well, that's kind of cool. Hi, Instagram world. I'm a little bit of a lag behind because that's uh, that's just kind of the way it is. So, listen, I've been spending the entire day getting myself ready for the tarot's class here. Just got a little short thing going on here today. Just saying hi to everybody. Figured I'd do a couple of readings and get out. But uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing the podcast again. Uh, the response has been overwhelming. You people really like Comedium Roast. and um, But why stop there? I mean, genuinely, why stop there? I'm going to move up. Ah! Hi. Did I do that suave enough? Did I do that with my hair a little messed up? Thank you very much. Starting to let it roll out a little bit. Hey, Patricia, how are you? I hope you're doing well. So we're going to be doing some readings here in a second, but um, tomorrow you're going to see the new format for the um, for the Comedian Roast podcast. Tomorrow is going to be episode number one. I want you guys to join in. It'll be about 11 o'clock Eastern, 10 Central, 11 Mountain Wait a minute, 11, 12, just tune in, just watch my channel. You should like and subscribe anyways. Uh, it's funny, Facebook's not showing up today. I wonder if Facebook's taking a day off. I guess the algorithms and I just aren't getting along. Uh, and over there on um, over there on Instagram, I can see you guys. Hey, Colleen, how are you? Um, Trish, good to see you. We got our pull, we got to, to replan that. Um, Amy, good to see you. Do, do, do. Diane, A Day in the Sun, Falia. Oh, my gosh. Listen, I'm going to have to go dual channel here because it only shows me one of them. Although, that's kind of, you know, by design. Hey, Colson, how are you? So we're going to be doing a couple of readings here. So just a little bit of a rundown. I want you to tune in or at least kind of be a prize to it. Um, tomorrow, the podcast of Comedian Roast is going to have its all-new format. We have decided to do a very kind of cool thing. And this was very conducive to uh, schedules and everything else. Um, I have uh, basically the format of the show is going to be, you know, me kind of doing the podcast. Uh, Daryl has graciously accepted to kind of stay on and do the producership. Uh, she's gotten quite good at it, quite frankly. And wanted to um, really kind of figure it out. And you guys are like, hey, we really like that Lindsay girl. Well, so do we. And she's going to be part of the show as well. But we're going to do it on a rotational basis. Because it's kind of like we want to do two or three of these a week. And she's kind of like, I got I to work. And then we're like, okay. But what that's going to open us up to is other guest hosts. So on a regular basis, we're going to have a rotation of some guest hosts that are going to come in. Uh, it'll be kind of a, you know, kind of a podcast with myself and that person. So it will be other people that are things such as um, mediums, healers, um, people that work with, with energies, people that are... Um, that do this light work and we'll also have guests on you know just pure guests you know writers uh musicians comedians so the format of the show is very good um we have some sponsors that want to see us kind of see what we can do here in a couple of weeks notice and they want uh they want to see some certain things so we're just going to line it up and we're going to hit the ground running hi prana killer how are you good to see you so so good to see you oh my gosh um artist yeah patricia i i would love and i know your river house i love 
your work over there. And I love giving shout outs to that as well. Uh, Merciful Mermaid Tarot joining over on Instagram. Well, look at you go. Aren't you multifaceted? Um, uh, Marsha, thanks for coming in. And it looks like some of you guys are jumping in and out, which is cool. Um, yeah, so that's kind of things in a nutshell. Hey, Melissa McSpirit, I kind of like that. Kind of like that name. You know, what were you? Would you get that? Um, did you get that at McDonald's? Sorry, I had to ask it. I just uh, having a good time. Um, but yeah, so that format is really coming into focus, and I am just good getting. Um, ah, there you are, Paul, over there on the algorithm on Facebook. Yeah, it's funny. As soon as I said something, then other people started showing up over there too, which is which is cool. But you know, this is really kind of more of a posterity. I know, Melissa. I know. Um, this is more of a posterity live because I just want to get some things out on the channel. Want to say hi to everybody. Let you know the podcast is coming back tomorrow. Um, and uh, hey, Brittany, it's funny where we run into each other, huh? Um, Kim, good to hear. Good to see you too. Thank you, guys. All right, so listen, um, you're going to want to tune in tomorrow. You're going to want to be a prize of the podcast tomorrow because I have a special announcement. We are going to have a very special guest host. Lindsay is going to be joining us as well. She's going to be on probably about every other week. Um, make sure that her schedule fits it. Uh, we want to be respectful to that, as well as the other you know, guest hosts that we're going to have on. Uh, she's really fantastic. She's really funny. And I'm not going to mince words. You are not going to want to miss this guest host. That That's it. That is it, right? Um, it's it's a pretty. Oh, Jesus, I lost a card already. Bye bye. Whew. Good lord, I'm dropping stuff already. Hey, Jody, how are you? Yeah, you know, and it's uh, and I have to tell you, when you start to see, I didn't rush this vision. Right, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I didn't rush this vision, and I've had a lot of I. I it took me a long time to put together that Trump video, but I also thought it was time to put that one out there. And by the way, really, no, I'm not going to tell you the card. Hey, I just picked up a card from the ground. I want you guys to guess what card it is that I just picked up off the ground, right? I'm going to do one of these. I'm going to do one of these. And I'm going to put this right here. That's the card I dropped on the ground. You guys go ahead and guess what card that is that I dropped on the ground. And uh, let's see how far we can go with this, right? Uh, Jimmy, good to see you. Uh, Brenda, good to see you too. Um, I was saying hello to her. She knows what I meant. Uh, the hermit I'm seeing out there. Um, you go ahead and guess what card it is. I'll talk for another minute or so. But I didn't rush this format, and I really went back and forth. It's going to be segment-driven. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, Daryl really brings to the table is that organization kind of behind the scenes um, because I'm a Pisces, I'm a creative, I want to, you know, I'm a Leo, I want to go, 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 I want to do, 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 and she's a Libra and she kind of sits back and goes, oh, all right, let me let me get the stuff together, let me just go ahead and do it. Um, she's willing to kind of do those really kind of chore-driven stuff. Um, the Phoenix, okay, well, we, uh, true hint, this is a, this is a traditional Rider Waite tarot deck. Um, Gracilia, good to see you. Ten of coins. Giving a little pentacle love there. I'm all right with that. Come on, guys. Tap into your intuition. Temperance or the Knight of Wands. Hey, Merciful Mermaid, um, you only get 27 guesses. So narrow it down. Give me your best 27. Uh, the Hangman, the Hermit again. Seeing a few of these out there. That's kind of good. Um, the World, I like that. King of Pentacles. Oh, Opie's jumping in here and going like, we're large and in charge here, everybody. All right, there we go. I'm going to narrow it down just a little bit, and I'm going to tell you that it is a minor arcana. And by the way, if you like how I talk about tarot, you would love my art and science of tarot class. This is the last day to get in. If you go and you sign yourself up, I will give you a 25% discount. And it is 25. And by the way, those of you that think, oh my God, I'm always going to wait um, for a discount with me, when um, there are times that I don't give discounts or I give them right up front and then I don't do it again. I I'm doing this now because I really want 
as many people in this as possible. And by the way, anybody that had paid full price, I actually made it up to them. They actually are getting a free reading from me. So just to let you know, sign up early next time. Just to let you know. Because I'm kind of grateful and that's how I roll. Um, yeah, I'm seeing some really... I'm seeing orange. What the heck? <laughs> well, keep going, Merciful Mermaid Tarot. Keep going on that one. Um, hey, Adrian, how are you? Good to see you out here. Um, Paxton in the house is talking about the Page of Pentacles. Um, by the way, you're going to go to tbrandonrust.com. I should probably put that in there. tbrandonrust.com. Go to that website. Easy to maneuver. Go to the events and find the art and science of tarot. At um, at nine o'clock tonight, you can no longer sign up. So I kind of, I'm kind of sort of letting you know that, guys. Like I can't really make an exception because you got to do some of the homework tonight. Just to let you know. <laughs> oh, by the way, what are you getting with those? <laughs> what are you getting with this class? Not only you're getting entertaining fun every Wednesday night with me. I've also got some really cool helpers along the way with that. I have a couple of students that have really kind of blossomed within that. As a matter of fact, Daryl's one of them. Monica is another uh, that we work with. Jess is going to be floating around, too. Hey, Sheila, how are you? Um, Kim, Queen of Cups. All right. Uh, Alicia, how are you? Uh, Pranic Healer. God, I, I love that you went with that name. I just do. Uh, wands, Queen of Wands. Well, of course you're going to say Queen of Wands. It's a bit of a mirror now, wouldn't you say? Um, but we're going to go with Minor Arcana here, guys. I'm going to give it another second here um, and really talk about the tarot class for a second. This, I've developed a way to teach this. I've been teaching for a really long time, and tarot can be overwhelming, right? You have 78 cards right out of the deck. Well, at the end of the second week, you have 56 of them nailed. I'm just going to say that out loud. And it's not about memorization. It's about the breakdown of them because there's a consistency. And yeah, you got to do some homework. And yeah, you got to put the time in. And yeah, you got to do that. But by the end of the fourth week, you really have the entire deck under your belt. No, by the way, you get a an entire PDF that explains that as a reference guide. As a reference guide. Oh, also, you're going to get an entire bank of videos that come along with it of me breaking down certain things that you can go back to for reference. I'm just telling you, I built an entire course behind the scenes here, and I can't wait to bring it to you. And you can get it for 25% off. End of sales pitch. Let's do some readings. Uh, okay, Queen of Cups. Uh, Kim's chiming in there. Hey, Tony, how are you? Uh, uh, Francesca, last second here. Go ahead and chime in. I had dropped a card just a minute ago. We're trying to decipher what it is. Um, hey, Pauline, how are you? How is it going? We got to get updated. Uh, and by the way, I those of you that are in the Weekly B, I have heard from a couple of you. Um, that you didn't receive the initial email, and I am terribly sorry. I don't know what happened. I did send it out a little bit late, but for whatever reason, it just didn't get to everybody. So we were missing some key people with that class, but the recording is going to be out here in a little bit. Um, hello, Langer Brook. Langer, L. Anger. L. Anger. Uh, Ten of Pentacles chiming in here. I'm going to check over here at Instagram and go ahead and get started with it. Ace of Wands. Uh, Juan's court card. Hey, Patsy, how are you? I think, I, I think, I think there may be a vacation in order here. Um, Ace of Wands. Okay, Merciful Tarot. I think you have Merciful Mermaid Tarot. I think you have uh, fourteen more guesses. Two of Swords. Um, Ten of Pentacles again. Minor Arcana. Three of Coins. Um, the suit has been mentioned, but the number has not been. Oh. Take a simple, gentle, deep breath in. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to show you one of the exercises at the end of this video. Three of coins. All right, guys, here we go. Are you guys ready? Four. One is the loneliest number that you ever do. I mean, but that's not the answer. Seven of wands. Wands court card. So, all right. So we're going to do an exercise at the end of this, and I want to kind of show you how I can teach you tarot and how you can blend it with your intuition. If you're really into this, just pay attention. We're, you know, I've got about half hour, 40 minutes here to do some readings. At the end of that, we're going to do a little meditation, and I'm going to pull out a card, and I'm going to help you kind of hone in on it. That's where the intuitive part of it is. So this card right here was the Eight of Cups. 
This is, you may have, in pure validation, felt things like loss, sorrow, things you need to let go, hopes and dreams being crushed. You know, a regular Tuesday night. But you may have been feeling emotional about this card. You may have been feeling like, oh, this is, th th this is kind of a thing, right? This is the first card of Pisces. This is the card from, say, last week in Pisces. It is the February Pisces card, right? So it's at the end of, <laughs> there you go, Trish. It's at the end of, uh, of Aquarius kind of moving into this. So it goes from the Ten of Swords astrologically to the eight of cups holy toledo and you're like what is that well sign up for the glass all right i'm going to carefully stoically kind of put this back in there i am going to give it a shuffle oh and, and by the way my microphone should should have come back to normal on this i did realize one of the challenges that i had in the audio of the last one um i had it like an echo cancellation and it canceled the two channels so there's kind of that problem. All right. By the way, how many times do you shuffle the deck? How many times do you do this? Well, you should take a class on it. There we go. All right. So a couple of rules. When I come to you, you're going to forget your name. You're going to forget your parents' name. You're going to forget your kid's name. You're going to forget everything that you've ever been attached to, except for your goldfish when you were 10 years old. And then when I start pulling out cards, some of it will resonate with you right away, but you might need the entire full picture in order to make it make sense. Right? Any validation that you can give to me is fantastic. It doesn't have to be praise. You can actually be like, dude, you freaking missed the mark. You might be so far off. Have a good day. Right? I'm okay with that, too, because I have to learn as I go as well. And sometimes things are the way that they're meant to be, and you will hear the things that you are meant to hear. So, you guys ready? Where am I going first here, everybody? Hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to celebrate the Instagram love, and um, do, 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 ah, hey, Susan, how are you? Uh, Caravan 13, hello as well. I'm going to head over here and, um, do, do, do. Oh, so you guys are jumping back and forth here. Some of you are in two channels. I probably only have like four of you actually reading anything. Um, oh my gosh. I think I just reported somebody. That's kind of weird. Hope you're doing well, kiddo. Um, so I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab somebody here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for hanging on. And you know what, Paxton, I got to give you the heads up here. You're giving the hands up. By the way, I fully, I fully expect Paxton as your cat. And I fully, you know, I, I'm obsessed with cat videos because I think that they're, I actually, th I mean, everybody's worried about like Democrats and Republicans. We should really be worried about cats and dogs. I mean, I know it's got to be honest. All right, Paxton, this one's coming to you here. As you guys know, we roll out three. Oh, and by the way, pay attention to some of the cards that you had talked about and see how they come together. Oh, look at this. First one up, Queen of Pentacles out of the gate. I know we saw that one. I know we saw that one. Hey, Paxton, I hope it kind of pays to show up, right? Hope you're still in the house, by the way. I hope you're still in this house. Oh, Paxton, you are in the house. Thank you so much for giving me ads up on this. Oh, there you go. And by the way, we are going to go upright on this, but this did come out right upside down. And you know what? Spirit's talking to me and just basically going, dude, you got you to gotta free and roll with us, right? All right. So this is kind of like, you, you, it's like an undue heartache. That doesn't mean the pain goes away. But you got a new mindset here. You got a new attitude. I don't mean to like yell at you, Patty LaBelle, but here you are. You got a new attitude. And you know what's kind of interesting about this kind of rollout, too? I really should work with reverses a little bit more. I've been contemplating that. And uh, clearly, I need to kind of do this. By the way, are you paying attention as I do this? Because there is a part of the of understanding what card is narrowed down because you're going to use your left and your right brain. Don't ever think that spirit doesn't work in logic with guys, right? Woo. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're going to do an answer call. Pauline, good luck on that. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be able to get to this quick enough. All right. So here we go. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Woo. All right. <laughs> you, my friend Paxson, you're all about the, you know what? I'm done with this physical. You're totally done with this physician. You're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to get super lean. I'm going to get super mean, right? A little bit of fight or flight mode there. A little bit of fight or flight mode. So with those five of swords, it's kind of like I'm going to take my ball and go home. Up against the queen of pentacles, this is a reminder to kind of go back to some basics and allow yourself to really kind of like, 
I don't know, just be you, right? It goes back to basics a little bit. What are you going to spend your time on? What are you going to spend your money on? This could be an indication of a past relationship just, just bleeding you dry, whether it be energetic or financial. By the way, this card's kind of an uplifter, right? And then we've got the seven of... Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. I love this combo platter. So the three of swords in reverse, along with the seven of wands straight up, is you being the wounded warrior. You had to go through this. I know it's not what you wanted to say here, Paxson. But let me tell you something. That is kind of how... That is kind of sort of how it's supposed to roll. And you know what? Remember what I said to you guys. So this is kind of like a new attitude, right? The page of wands, although a bit of immaturity... It is also the idea of like a new mindset, like you've mentally kind of evolved into things, right? So guess freaking what? How about a little hermit card? How about you evolve from this? This is a new way of of, of where it is that you're going to go, right? This is pretty fantastic. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. Did I just say I was fantastic? I, I never lie about being fantastic. By the way, everybody... If you don't get my sense of humor when I'm like talking about that, you haven't paid attention long enough and you don't stick around for when I'm self-deprivating too. Like, I'm having fun. So anyways, back to how right I am. So the Page of Swords is kind of that new attitude in this Hermit card. This is, all right, all right, Paxton, you and the kitty, come here. By the way, Paxton, how, Paxton, how many brothers and sisters do you have in the house? Because Paxton in the house could be a single... You know, 55-year-old woman because you have 20 of you. Or it could be uh, a lifelong soulmate that got you through a difficult time, in which case you're going to lift yourself up and run with love again, right? Sorry, it's a statistical balance, right? Whenever a guy's dating a woman for the first time, they're like, so do you think it's going to work? And I'm like, how many cats do they have? <laughs> Literally, that's my question. In this case, I'm assuming Paxton is in the house and Paxton runs the house because if not, you would have had to name it, you know, Paxton Fluffy and every other, you know, cat it is that you had, and then, and then I would say, well, then you're going to live alone the rest of your life. But that's not what's going on because Paxson runs a roost, right? Paxson is a lifelong hetero soulmate that will allow you to do the wounded healing work that you need to do. It is to be on guard and you will know better next time. This is a little bit of isolation, but it's not isolation like you're alone. It is you getting your spiritual house in order and it's going down a new path. The spiritual world like the, the the industry the path work all of those things tend to come in in people's lives when they hit that bump in the road those first two cards were kind of like bumps in the road and how you reacted to them this last set of cards is about your new attitude moving forward if they do not feed you if they do not spiritually bring you to a higher place they are not for you dude that simple yeah, I just called somebody I don't really know, dude. Right? <laughs> oh, and by the way, I'm going to ask another trivia question. Um, who was the only singer to audition for both Black Sabbath and Journey? I'll give you a hint. He did not get it. But you all know him. Yeah, so Paxton, it sounds like some validation here that uh, definitely have a new attitude. And guess what? You should have a new attitude. You should. I mean, there is no waste of time in this life so long as you learn something. That is one of the truisms of the spiritual journey, right? Uh, I have a book that's going to be coming out. There's no volume. Do you guys have volume? Did I lose out here? Please let me know that I have volume. Yeah, and Paxton, you know, I think that's a that's a genuine thing. I'm calling you Paxton like you're your cat, but here we are. Um, try turning it up there, Kel. Uh, Kelly, thanks for the yeah, th thanks for the heads up. And Kelly, it looks like you might have a little bit of a device thing going on here, but you know I care. I'd stop everything for you. Um. Yeah, so you guys are pretty good. Jimmy! Jimmy got the fucking question right! Stop. Stop. Jimmy, how do I bring you on? No, oh, I almost reported you again. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, it's stuck in Shelburne. Sherborne. You, you're really everywhere. You're like on three three different, uh, three worlds. You're jumping around there. Uh, Jimmy actually got the right answer. i got to give you full credit on this one. This next spread's for you here, Jimmy. You earned this one. Uh, Kim, i got to come to you next. It was Michael Bolton, everybody. So, little fun story. Michael Bolton was kicking around like a long hair, and um, th- th- he was literally slated to come in and be Black Sabbath to replace Ozzy Osbourne, by the way. And when he came in in the audition, they were like, listen, we've got like the forum in like three weeks. We need a lead singer. And then there was um, Ronnie James Dio walked in and he handed him the liner notes for a song called Neon Nights. And if you're if you're a fan of Black Sabbath, you know the song. And basically, Geezer Butler looked at him and said, go call the other guy and tell him he's done. He didn't even didn't even hear him sing yet, but they kind of knew Ronnie James Dio because he was in this band called Elf, and they had they had a decent following. It's funny he's Ronnie James Dio was like five foot two, so he was in a band called Elf, which is kind of funny, but it was kind of like that medieval kind of metal stuff. And sure enough, he had um, oh my gosh! So Jimmy, yeah, we're gonna totally go into that. Um, hey Latoya, how are you? Good to see you. Um, yeah, I think this Instagram's got a little bit of a lag. I think that's a thing. I think that's what's going on, too. So, yeah, so then with Journey, this was kind of crazy. So, Journey was always a super group. And by the way, today is Neil Schoen's 70th birthday. For those of you that are feeling a little bit old today, here's a little nudge. Oh, Sherry? His, his his backup, I just caught that Steve Perry. I just totally switched gears. Um, but Neil Schoen, who was in another super group before that, he was in a um, he was in a jazz quartet. Uh, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the name of it. They did a thing called, it might have been called Curved Air. Um, but Rod Morgenstein was in that band as well. And he went on to be in a little band called Winger. Oh, my gosh. Six degrees of Brandon. By the way, none of this has anything to do with me. But Michael Bolton was um, was the finalist. He was kind of the guy. And they called him. I don't think they were super serious. I, I shouldn't say he was a finalist. I don't think they were super serious about Michael. Not like Black Sabbath. Like Black Sabbath, he kind of had the gig. Can you freaking imagine? Tell me how am I supposed to live with... Oh, death and dismemberment. Anyways. Um, yeah, and Dio really, Dio stole the show there. And then um, and then Steve Perry walked in, and once again, it's kind of like, first of all, what did we learn? Um, Paxson in the house, thank you so much. I'm glad, I'm glad it resonated with you. So what did we learn? First of all, don't be too tall. Right? That's kind of a thing. Because between Steve Perry and Ronnie James Dio... Yeah, they're about, they're barely breaking seven foot. Like, they're really not that tall. Individually, they're like, sorry, I don't want to get blocked. Um, that one was for you, Penny. And um, But I'm not in stereo. Mother pus bucket. You guys make me swear. Hold on, please hold. I got all of these controls. Ground control, Major Tom. Oh. Am I in stereo now? That's kind of interesting. Well, I hope I'm in stereo. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. I hope I hope that kind of changed. Um, thanks for the heads up there, Carolyn. I'm glad that you guys kind of have that there. Did that work? Did that fix it? Did I fix it? Son of a bit! You know what happened? Okay, so you want to hear something funny? This is me learning, right? This is me going like, I got all these bells and whistles. I'm going to make them all work, and I've got a little empire. I feel like I'm in the control center, and I'm just waiting for somebody to come flying in going, it's a trap! Like, I think I like totally have it together. And then you know what I freaking did? I turned on the stereo button on the interface. Mother, are you kidding me? By the way, now my microphone's hot, ain't it? 
anyways i got some promises out there by the way this is going to go out to uh jimmy jimmy i saw yours first um but kim do hang out there do hang out here as i'll come to you next i'll do a few more here all right jimmy here you go knight in shining armor coming in knight of wands here for you jimmy hold on a second let's see what we saw whoa how about a little ace of swords in here oh my gosh first of all if you're not successful tonight it's not barry white's fault am i right or am i right so reading from left to right, the Knight of Wands comes in, kind of this new kind of brazen energy to be like, I'm going to take charge here. The Ace of Swords is a mindset change. It's a change. Oh, it's a change. And then the Six of Cups just gently says, what success may lie on the other side of change? Right? By the way, Eight of Cups showing up again. Right there in the Knight of Wands. Apparently that didn't work well for you. You know, it's kind of like being like, you get more bees with honey. By the way, go ahead, if you're on the Facebook side of things, type in Spirit Tree Bees. Go ahead and join my group. I'll approve it here in 20 minutes. And then, oh, seven of coal. Oh. Changing your mindset will actually open it up so you have more options, by the way. So changing mindset with the Ace of Swords and then the Seven of Cups. Bingo Super Zingo, right? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. By the way, the thing in which you chase is the thing that you must find. The Ace of Pentacles comes out to show sheer abundance. You got two abundance cards on the other side of it. Whatever you're trying for, and Jimmy, I know you a little bit because we met down in the great state of Memphis. <laughs> it's in Tennessee, Brandon. I know that, but we're thinking about succession. Anyways, we met, and I know you got a little project coming along. So once upon a time, you were like, I'm going to cram this project down everybody's throat. I'm going to be the Knight of Wands. I'm going to be like, hey, how you doing? Here's my wand. Here you go. And then you're like, and then they're just like, um, we're going to pass on that. And then you're like, I need to change my, my approach. I'm going to do it this way. And then people are like, what is that? What is that? Go ahead and tell me about it. And you're like, well, I don't really know if I want to share it with everybody. And then they're just kind of like, please, please, me, me. And then all of a sudden, then it becomes a little bit of abundance matrix. And then all of a sudden, you're getting paid a cha-ching. Thank you very much for champagnes on me. Am I right or am I right or am I right? Or am I right? Jimmy, I got to switch over there. Thank you for giving me the heads up on that. Uh, yeah, it crashed. So listen, this is about a new mindset for you, buddy. It's about a new mindset. Or as um, as our good friends, the Pointer Sisters, point out, it was about a new attitude. I don't know about that right there. Uh, Kim, I'm going to bring you up here. Look at this. Did you ever think that you would be put on camera for saying the words Michael Bolton? I celebrate all his work. If you don't get the office, the office space joke. All right, all right, uh, Kim, here we go. I'm seeing everybody under the sun. All right, Kim, you ready for this one? You get the Lord of the Flies card. This, of course, is a five of wands. By the way, if you're paying attention at home, and if you've been watching the videos because you've already signed up, you know that I use the five of wands as one of the examples on how to translate. Five is the numerical or the numerology of change, right? It's about change. It's about conflict. Wands are about actions. They're about passion. So this is a... It's a pretty heady fighting card, right? It's five minutes for fighting, but guess what? You're going to rise above the scene and kind of go... You know, King of Wands, you're basically going to be like, all right, kids, enough with the fighting. Enough with the fighting here. And then you're going to be like, how about this? This is all about compromise to me. This is about you being the bigger person. This is about you coming up with a new idea that will really kind of help stuff. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? By the way, you could crush them in one blow, but you've decided not to. That's just my take on it. That's just my little bit of feel there. But you're going to do the right thing. Because the Hierophant shows up, and the Hierophant oh, totally has your back here. The Hierophant kind of does like a, like a um, we're going to make sure that you're good to go, right? By the way, thank you to the matriarchy. By the way, I'm totally getting family with us, Kim. Because right now, the Queen of Pentacles comes out, and the Queen of Pentacles just goes, Pitter Pat, my love, God bless your heart. Bless your heart. It's just kind of like a, your stuff doesn't stink here. 
So we're going to come up with the new ideas so then we can take care of the ones that are a little bratty, a little bitchy, if you will. But we don't all act like that, but you act like that. So we're going to go lowest common denominator here. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that little, that, that you're just kind of like little old you is like all set. So you're okay with everything else because you're just kind of an immature wench. But we're going to put up with you all the way through this. I don't want no more fighting. And I could crush you like a grape if I wanted to. But on the other side of this, just... Just know that I'm doing this because I'm really in charge. Go take it, kid. Go take it. Go run with it and be who you are meant to be in all of this. Oh, Kim. All that for Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton led you to the land of the promise right now. Land of the promise. Promise of the land. Oh, so good. So good. Where are we going to? Kim, let me know if that resonates with you. Yeah, Mary Jo, sometimes you got to take the higher road. Sometimes you got to rock that out there. Sometimes you got to be good for it, right? And listen, you're going to be you're going to be one with me on this one here, Karen. Karen, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Um yeah, Ronnie James, you RJD. Um I had a chance um First, first of all, so those of you who know the backstory about the show and stuff like that, and you know Teresa and that sort of thing. My favorite episode was when she channeled. She was sitting down with um, Rudy Sarzo. Uh, was it Rudy Sarzo? Or was it Carlos Cavalla? It was somebody from Quiet Riot. I think it was Carlos. And she connected with Randy Rhodes, and the two of them were actually. Oh no, no, no! It was Rudy Sarzo because they were in Quiet Riot. He was it, Randy Rhodes is in Quiet Riot before Ozzy. Blah blah blah. And she connected with him, and she and the way she talked about him, she never talked about him as a guitarist. She never talked to him about you know. She was just like, yeah, he says I'm your brother, and talked about him as a brother, and you know, kind of went down that route. And he goes, you don't know who you're talking about like he's like everybody knows who randy is and she's just like i really don't know you guys have long hair and your hair is higher than mine so that makes me jealous i'm picking on you Teresa. send your letters um send your letters keep your love um and that that was my favorite episode because it like totally linked to not only the music but then also like i've had stuff like that in readings and by the way tune into the podcast because one of the questions that i want to be able to ask people on a regular basis is how do how do you handle when you know quote unquote famous people come through oh and kim thank you for the validation i'm glad that resonated with you um karen coming to you and by the way dio is one of those guys that just man oh man his stuff gets better over time but he needed to do the right thing. And I think it was more of he needed to surround himself with people that did the right thing. And, um, hey, uh, Francesca, where can you get the podcast? You're going to go to the YouTube channel. You're going to, um, first of all, you're going to like and subscribe that channel. And then if you want to be part of the filming, we have an audience level for just $2.99 a month. You're going to get, as it's going to roll out, at least eight episodes, if not 15, along with special content behind the scenes. Um, by the way, if you sign up, you're going to get a video tonight of me talking about the special guest that I'm going to have. Oh, did I tease a special guest? A special guest host? And by the way, all of you know them. Here we go, Karen. Oh. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords. Should I sing Michael Bolton songs all night? Or should I talk about how you pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you're like, oh, no. No, no. Oh, no. How did Karen get her groove back? Karen's just like, I'm not sticking around here. But you know what I am going to do? I'm going to celebrate good times. Come on. Here we go. So this is telling the tale about you getting the out of Dodge because somebody was toxic. There it is. I said it. And by the way, toxic. Can we st can we quit calling people narcissistic? Can we quit diagnosing people with whatever it is that, that it's there? Even if they already have it, who are we to share somebody's stuff? If you call them toxic and say, they're just not for me, that's cool. I'll accept it. Let's just say you were in a not so great situation. You wanted to kind of go, do you like the, do you like the English accent, do you? By the way, is it a little bit from, am I taking requests now? What the fuck? What is, what, where am I in my career? But I love doing the British accent, you see. It's almost more of like, I'm almost like an autistic British man. <laughs> where I'm just like, oh dear, look at that, a squirrel. So anyways, by the way, how did you get out of Dodge? You got out of Dodge in secret. You planned it. You executed it. I'm not saying that you faked your own drowning while you were sleeping. 
But I'm just going to tell you, it's kind of a little bit of fun here. It's got a little bit of inference into that with that combo platter. And then you took out all emotions. You went ahead and you said, no, I have to do what's best for me. Talk about growth for you, Karen. I'm kind of digging it. I kind of like the way that it is. Um, and oh, by the way, the happiness card gets crowned by the fool. So this is a new adventure for you. You're not used to being happy. You're not used to enjoying things. You're not used to kicking ass and taking names. But let me tell you something. kind of looks good on you. Right? Um, where are you in this live? Where am I in this live? Am I missing in this live? Oh, Kelly. Pan left. So, so Karen, this is a beautiful read for you. Do you want me to sound all British medium? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go British medium here. So here it is, Karen. And by the way, I'm I'm also going to share with you one other thing because I pulled over two cards. I didn't pull over one. I pulled over two, and I have fantastic advice for you. Are you ready? Because not only have you gone down this path that you've just kind of you fended for yourself, dear. You've become this queen of like. You, you had to shut off your emotion. You had to turn off the waterfall. You had to let the levee go dry so then you could escape from this. Chances are you actually moved away. The Three of Wands gives us the opportunity to do that. And the King of Swords, well, that just that's just you having setting down the law like daddy's in charge. Can we just say that for just a moment? And then over here on this last pull, you talk about the celebration. And then you have the Fool card. But as I mentioned, there were two cards that came out. You know what the other one was? The other one was actually the Nine of Swords. So I can't really tell which one came out, but you may be waiting for the other shoe to drop. You, my dear, are on an adventure. You've come this far, and you haven't come this far to just come this far. You, my dear, shouldn't be nervous about your celebratory life. It is brand new. You should celebrate it on the new adventure. Quit worrying about the other one. Although you could use a... Mm, a little bit of cosmetic surgery and maybe change a little bit of the highlights. Let's not go with Frosted next time and let's try and decide something a little more indignant to somebody. If he can pick you out in a crowd, then anyone can and you don't want that. Am I right? Yeah, fair enough. You do great work anyways. And by the way, whatever you do in the bourgeois is all about you. You can do whatever it is that you want. But when you're out in public, you might want to wig it up a little bit and maybe throw everything into the caution into the wind. And when did I borderline... Baby Stewie. <laughs> oh, Karen. Karen, thanks for the validation. Thanks for being spot on there. Hey, Julie, how are you? Lori, great to see you too. Um, Karen, I hope that uh, I hope that kind of resonated. I hope you appreciated that. Did I really just take a request to do a British accent? What the fuck is wrong with me? Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, this is the kind of fun that I, I'm really kind of meant to have. Like, let's have fun with this. Um, you know, the, the, the incarnations of the, uh, podcasts that I've had over the years, um, you know, they were, they were, they were generally really, really good. Um, <laughs> mommy, mama, mommy. Um, yes, yes. Loving all the growth here at LaToya. Um, I really should sing more Michael Bolton, you know, Fail. I don't. I don't know if that's going to work. Susan, welcome aboard. Um, and and baby Stewie and baby 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 Stewie. All right. How about we do a couple of more of these? Uh, hey Julie, how are you? I'm going to show this one, not the other one. Jesus, Julie, for crying out loud. All right, here we go. All right, Julie, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, we're going to go with the Four of Cups. This, of course, is about, this is also known as the FOMO card. This is the one of fear missing out. It's kind of like, well, I have three. I should be celebrating, but I just want more. There's a little bit of, like, dissatisfaction in this, but it could be kind of to your base. It could be the something of, like, you're always told that things weren't good enough or things weren't great enough. But when you go back to the right thing to do in the Hierophant, this is about you getting into a position of fate because the Wheel of Fortune comes out here. Boom, boom, boom. By the way, the Wheel of Fortune is about fixed energy. This is about you heading towards doing the right thing. It's about fate. It's about meeting people. It's about doing the things that you're meant to do. And here you go. And guess what? What are you missing out on? <laughs> huh? The Page of Wands comes out. I don't know what you're missing out on, kid. The Page of Wands is kind of like the, it's kind of like the new, uh, it's kind of like the new attitude, like the Pointer Sisters pointed out. Am I right or am I right? But on the other side of that, it's also about you kind of being like, maybe I've just been doing it wrong for a while. 
right? The Hierophon is about getting something the right way and in your worthiness. And then the Knight of Pentacles comes out here and just rocks. It just rocks your world. It's about somebody coming in and being a super foundation and the fate attached to this. By the way, Aquarian is right here in the upper left-hand corner. Why not the star card on top of it? Boy, you are meant for greatness here, Julie. You are meant for greatness. So maybe this is about you. Quit worrying about what's going on in day-to-day -day life and just start doing things that help you leave your body, help you channel, help you transmeditate, help you go and be a, a citizen of the, of, the, of the galaxy, of the galactic world. Um, wow. Wow, that's pretty potent. So it went from kind of like a, oh, you're so sad, to like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Channel Liam Neeson. Welcome to your reading. I have a particular set of skills. <laughs> I will turn your cards over and I will find them. And I will interpret them. <laughs> I don't know what else to say aside from killing somebody at that point. Um, Julie, yes! I am so happy. Oh my gosh, did I just take a request to read like Liam Neeson? I have a particular set of skills. I read tarot. There are many decks like that, but this one is mine. I will be able to predict things. I will be able to show you. I will be able to identify you. And I will find you. Oof. I just dropped eggs on that one. Holy <laughs> shit, that was pretty good, B. Julie, welcome aboard. Thank you. Please let us know that the cat what the captain will have for dinner, Julie. That was a love boat reference. You're welcome. Sorry. You'll never get away from it, Julie. Julie's good to see you, love. Good to see you out here in the interweb. Um, so, uh, Greeny, how are you over there on the YouTube land? Sharon, welcome. Mary Alice, how are you? Um, Sharon, yeah, I think I can kind of do that. Pretty potent moon. Something is pretty potent. The moon? Oh, yeah. So... You guys know what's going on with the moon here, right? So you just had the full moon in Virgo, which, by the way, I haven't gotten away from doing astrology, guys, at all. At all. As a matter of fact, I'm doing so much astrology now. My focus is a little bit on the tarot because I am releasing the book at the end of this that you can be able to purchase. By the way, if you sign up for the class, you get it for free. I'm just saying I'm a nice guy. I'm just saying. Right? Hey, Laura, how are you? Hey, Laura, we got to reconnect. I don't know what's going on with us here. We got to reconnect there. Patricia, good to see you. La Bella Luna. Oh, my gosh. Did you just pull out the... the? Um... <laughs> oh, my God. You know what I'm going to do? Patricia, thank you so much for like giving me all that inspiration in... in uh... in all of that. So... Yeah, Mary Jo, I'll, I'll come to you next, but I want to do the Bella Luna. So, you know, um, Moonstruck, one of my favorite movies of all time, because Nicolas Cage, like, is in just a completely different class of actors in that entire movie. Like, Danny Aiello is his brother, who, like, just outclasses him in the whole movie. Cher is phenomenal, right? Um, and, and that's not a physical thing. I mean, her, her chrysalis moment was kind of cool. But, I mean, you had Olympia Dukakis. You had um, the dad, and I, I'm not remembering this. But, you know, you even had um, John Murphy, uh, the one from Frasier. I mean, you had, like, an all-star cast and all of that. And Nicolas Cage had basically done Crybaby. Like, he was, he was in a support cast role. Um, so, um, yeah, Green, I can help you with that, actually. My class. Vincent Gardenia, thank you. Francesca, thank you. Um, anyways, it's one of my favorite lines. So I'm about to do this. Oh, I probably shouldn't do this. Hey, Mary Jo, can you tell me what part of the anatomy, and don't get into anything specific, but could you tell me what type of, you know, what part of the anatomy? Uh, and if it's private, it's just say private. If it's stomach, chest, arms, legs, because I don't want to do this soliloquy from Moonlighting and have it be like, Carpal tunnel. Okay, fair enough. We're sharing a lot there, but we, we don't have to go that. Okay, so listen, in and out. By the way, this is not medical advice, but this is Nicolas Cage. I hope you like. I hope you like impressions while you do tarot. By the way, I think this is how I'm going to become famous here. So, um, 
you know, and of course, my favorite scene is when she goes to tell him that she's marrying her brother. And then his brother's just like, did Johnny tell you about me? I ain't no freaking monument to justice. What am, I, what, what am I supposed to do? Rip my heart out and just and just forget? <laughs> Johnny has his hand. Johnny has his bride. I'm sorry, that's awful. Good luck to Mary Jo's husband tomorrow. Because here we go. I do know this. I don't know much, but I know he loves you. I know you love him because the Knight of Cups doesn't come out during amateur hour. It just does not come out during amateur hour. Huh. How much do you guys love each other? It was great. Thank you. Holy Toledo. Because when a man loves a woman. When a man loves a woman. And by the way. And again, I'm not going to share what the surgery was. If you saw it, you saw it. But um, Page of Wands come out. So I'm going to go ahead and did I did I combine like five decks here? I think it did. Is there another page of wands in here? Or did I just accidentally throw it back on there? No, there was the knight of wands. I'm not crazy. So here it goes. If I just gave you this as a spread, this is where I go with this Mary Jo. This man loves you. You were meant to be together. I'm going to say you've been married for 44 years. That's what they show me. It might be wrong. Page of Wands here. Um, Page of Wands here is kind of like a new way to show affection. Fair enough. And by the way, did you guys, Ace of Hearts, hang on there. Mary Jo, I don't know if there's something different about him. Like maybe you and your families didn't necessarily get along. But you were like, this is kind of new. Or maybe you didn't think you would ever get married. You know, but anyways, you he saw you and you saw him. And then you were just like, okay, there we go. Um, oh. Mary Jo, it's a love story. Because he's got the eye of the tiger for you. That's where he's going with this. Mary Jo, he's scared. He's scared and he would never want to do it alone. And by the way, what a good looking guy he is. He's going to do the right thing because he's never going to forget his wife. He's never going to forget standing by his side. And I'm going to tell you the right things are going to happen all the way through it. And, you know, the Page of Wands and the Emperor come out because it's It'll make him double down. It'll make him change some things that he needs to. Maybe it's an attention. Maybe it's an affection. Maybe it's an about how it is that he approaches things. Like, oh, yeah, I'll get to that line. I'll get to whatever. Or maybe he'll take a little bit of a step back and actually take care of himself and put himself first. You know, sometimes that's a thing with guys that are, you know, that have kind of been down that road before where they're just like, oh, if I just work so much, then I don't have to worry about anything. And then you get smacked right in the puss. And you're like, I got to slow down a little bit. But the, I'm going to call this spread when a man loves a woman. Because let me tell you something. He loves you to death. He loves you in a way that you asked for it. Um, and you've not, you're not... Well, I'm going to say this. You're knocking this out of the park. What's going on with this prostate? Um, 44. What is the 44? What is the 44? What's April 4th? Oh, what's, what's August? I'm getting a ton of stuff right now. Wow. You give me some validation on the number 44 or April 4th. And I'm, and I'm going to stick with August, too. I don't know what this is. Um, he's, showing up, he's showing up with this. So, listen. Follow the instructions. By the way, you got until like 9 o'clock. Get him a super cool meal. You're going to get that. Uh, and, you know, the joke is that he would want a steak, but that's not what he wants. He wants something else. He wants something with texture. He wants like a cheeseburger. He wants like macaroni and cheese. I don't know what this is. But uh, married 35 years. Okay. Well, when I say 44, I don't want you to tell you. it's. A, I want to tell you it's like an hourglass and a timing thing. 
there's something about this and there's something about eight or August and you're going to hang on to this. I don't know if this is them. Oh, do you have to be there for eight o'clock in the morning? Yeah, Asa Hearts is chiming in. 4:44 is, I mean, what it means to the universe. This is about foundation, and of course, you you know, you get the. By the way, the Four of Wands is the wedding card. You got to be there for six, but I'm going to tell you, he's going to go in for eight. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be one of those things where they're going to be like, okay, we did what we were supposed to do. We saw what we were supposed to see. Everything went ahead as planned, and. Um, I'm going to say it out loud. Thank goodness he paid attention to what was going on and he raised his hand. He actually put himself first to actually go get checked. And I have a physical tomorrow. And Mary Jo, I'm going to be blunt with this. Um, if it wasn't for your encouragement, he would have skipped all of that. Up to and including him wanting to, you know, so, sometimes people get upset when people are nags. And Mary Jo, you are not a nag. You're not a nag. But you saying, I love you, please go to the doctor. Please go get that looked at. Isn't being a nag. It's saying that you love them. Right? By the way, if you're on Facebook, you're seeing her reaction, and yep, that's very true. By the way, I'm going to do this. I, I mean me, I'm right? Okay. Um, men don't take care of themselves in this country, and I have been a beacon of that. I have to start carving out time for myself, for people I want to spend time with, for adventures I want to go on. And I, I had tremendous growth last year in doing some of the things that I wanted to do. And and it's not because I'm running out of time or people around me are running out of time or any of that other stuff. It has everything to do with... You know, you struggle back and forth between diving into saying, oh, everything's about spirit. It's like, well, I guess I'm supposed to have this or I'm supposed to go through this or what less am I supposed to learn and all of that other stuff. And we psycho babble and we spiritually bypass the fact that it, it, it becomes Occam razor. And if you're not familiar with that term, what that means is, is that it, the simplest answer is the correct one. Don't overthink it he needed to slow down and take care of himself. Thank goodness he is now because it's going to be okay. And again, I can't do false hopes and promises, but every little thing is going to be all right now. Mary Jo, I need you to get some, get a good night's sleep. Right? Right? I want you to pay attention to how much water you take in. I want you to make yourself a bottle of water, one of those containers, put a couple ice cubes in it, keep it cool. And make sure you sip on it regularly. Don't get that Dasani crap when you get there. Aquafina is just as bad, if not worse. Get some bottled out. You'd rather drink out of the tap, the garden hose, Love Canal. There's a lot of places you'd rather drink than Dasani. I can't figure out why I can't get sponsors. Um... Because I want you to recognize that the one thing that he wants from you, the only thing he wants from you, is when he wakes up, he wants you there. Now, that doesn't mean that he's not going to be in post-op and they have to go through as a routine, but he just needs to know you're there. Because when a man loves a woman, he knows a woman loves him back because she has his back for him. That's what this read was about. The entire internet is jealous of you, Mary Jo. I know it's a surgery, and I know it's a blip on the map. 
By the way, astrologically, it's a pretty cool day because it's about healing. You got some cool angles going on with Chiron. I don't want to get into it right now, but this week is actually very healing. Once we get past this denouement of, of self-criticism, like criticism and taking care of ourselves and kicking yourself in the pants going, I should have gone six months ago, or I should have done whatever. I should have, I should have paid attention to it. I should have taken care of myself. All of those things evaporate when you do the right thing, right? Because the best day to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best day is today, right? So, here is, I had promised you guys a little bit of a thing, and I'm, I'm going a little bit over, and I have to bring it somewhere, but it's okay. I am going to put this card, I'm not going to put this card out there. Whew. Dodged a bullet on this one. Okay, now, I'm going to put two cards out here. I like this. I like this. No, I'm not going to do that to anybody. I'm going to put all three of them out there. Mary Jo, good luck to you. Um, safe work for your husband, and he's in good hands. Okay. Now, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna lead you guys through a simple, gentle meditation. And guess what? You are gonna jot down what you feel these three cards are. You might get a number. You might get a suit. You might get a major arcana, and you might get uh, a color. Did I say color? Um, so what I want you to do is take a simple, gentle, deep breath in. And I want you to focus in on the card to the wide left here. I want you to think about what it looks like. I want you to think about the symbols that are attached to it. I want you to get any numbers that you might be able to get. And I want you to feel what the card is. Now I want you to move to the second card. I want you to recognize that this card is meant to be seen by you. I want you to focus in on the color surrounding it. Maybe it's the suit. Maybe it's the archetype. Maybe it's the emotional feeling that you have with it. Just write down that. And then with this final card, I want you to take a look at it with your mind's eye. I want you to just focus in on one little square of it. Just one, just one, just one. And tell me what it looks like to you. Maybe it's a color. Maybe it's a hand. Maybe it's a animal. Maybe it's a person. Just one little square. Inch by inch square. What does it look like to you? All right. I'm glad you guys had a chance to jot that stuff down. And... Oh. Lenny, if it wasn't for you, I'd have quit by now. Good seeing you, brother. Miss you. All right. So go ahead, if you want to type it in, or if you just want to follow along at home, that's cool too. We're looking for the left to the right, what cards they are. And by the way, these are some of the challenges that I give the students, because it's one thing to be able to turn over the cards and interpret them, right? They're in a book. They, there's reference guides, there's materials, and there's, way to be able to, there's ways to be able to memorize them. But I really want you to understand the intuition that gets locked, that, that you can unlock with this. Um, Tara was a really important tool for me because I was able to, um, I was able to really kind of unlock my intuition into it. And I eventually was like, I've graduated from these cards. I don't need them anymore. And then I realized like when I would get a little wonky, I'd be like, ah, these cards are actually really good, right? They're really, really solid. So go ahead and pay attention to that in your own path, if you will. Um, I love that. One yellow, red queen, two diamond, three elk. I love you, Patty. I love it. 
I love it. Let the artist lead the way, please. Um, Francesca, uh, five of pentacles. Bold move. You just called your shot with that. The fool and the coin. Anybody else want to lock in on that? I'll give you another second here. I'm going to look over here on the uh, on the Instagram side. Um, oh, my gosh. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Hey, Rita, how are you? I just saw you over here on Insta. Um, Nicholas Cage doesn't tip waiters and said, oh, I guess he needs to have a conversation. Um, no, look at this. Our friends over at Soulwell. By the way, we're going to be there doing some sound healing. Oh, by the way, everybody, those of you that have been following along, I have an event that I'm going to be adding on. I actually have a couple of events adding on. Um, in a couple of weeks, um, Lindsay and I are actually going to do a show together out in Syracuse. So Syracuse people, I'm coming out your way. Uh, also, um, down in Bainbridge, I'm going to actually be doing a sound healing along with a message circle on March 30th. I'm just going to add that on. Uh, Laura gets the hang of that. Four, yellow, blue. All right, guys, time to do a reveal and Incubus 22 on. Love that name. Love that name. Love that name. Hearts, Ace of Swords, Six of Wands. Well, Incubus. Seems like we've got to pay attention to this one. All right, guys. First card up. The Tower in Reverse. Ooh, by the way, this is no particular reading, but the entire group can benefit from this because the Tower in Reverse actually talks about... Um, that's okay, Gina. We'll be going to uh, Sylvan Beach. The Tower in Reverse is kind of that slow burn of what you need to pay attention to, right? Uh, bold move there, Cotton. Three of Swords, King of Cups, Seven of Wands. Because let me tell you something. The Seven of Wands comes out. Ding, ding, da, ding, ding, ding. Janice, thanks so much for joining and playing here. The Seven of Wands is about getting the higher ground. So this is about you realizing that you need to do some work, but getting yourself in a position of a higher ground so you can get yourself there. And then let's rock and roll with the Ace of Cups. Whew. Red and the yellow, everybody. Red and the yellow. Good job. Grade yourself at home. By the way, I love to give you credit, and I love to give homework, but I never grade it. Do you know why? I never grade any of my homework because it's up to you. You, you have to want to do this work. I can't make you make the, do this work. That's, that's not fair to me. Your soul is your responsibility, everybody. Go do it. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying the um, the daily messages. I'm enjoying doing them. I hope you kind of like and subscribe to all of that. Um, I get zero, but that's quite <laughs> Francesca. It's all good. It's not about a grading system. Pay attention to what you did get. By the way, there's no wrong answers while you're developing. Just because you didn't get a 100 doesn't mean that you can't learn something with us. Go ahead and take a look at what you kind of got right or why you thought you might have gotten it wrong, right? That allows you to grow, right? That allows you to grow, right? Uh, yeah, Rita, get ready for that. I know a few of you are signed up and ready to go. Um, it's going to be March 15th, by the way, that I'll be out in Syracuse, but that's okay. I'll be out at the wellness studio doing some music. Uh-oh, I have some other announcements to make, but I'm not going to make them yet. All I know is that I got a song and I got to sing it. I fell in love with an Irish spring boy just before the 4th of July. She loved him and he loved her. By summer's end, they had quite the surprise. Yes, they did. Get ready for the full version of that. I can't wait to create again. I cannot wait to create again. 
All right, guys, hard taps going out there. Go ahead and like subscribe over at the YouTube channel. Just type in Medium Brandon Russ. I'll come up 150,000 times. If you want to see the live recording of tomorrow's podcast, go ahead and sign up for the audience version of it. And then um, if not, you'll get clips and drabs of it and all that other good stuff. But you're going to want to sign up for the special guests that we have coming in next week. Kind of a big deal kind of a big deal oh and by the way if you subscribe and get in there you can see the video of the reveal of the special guest can't wait to tell you guys gonna go make a video over there talk to you soon guys Mwah. later gators have fun peace out girl scouts oh and um get your year lease done let it save your life. I want to talk to all of you. I want to meet all of you, but I'd like you to not be dead. Got it? All right, guys. See you soon.